Don't know if everybody knows this one, but um, I for a while didn't actually do it. I just I figured there must be a way. And you just simply select any key you want. Now I would like to mention that if you use any of the F keys, it's not always the most practical thing because in some games you will press the F keys for whatever reason, maybe take screenshots or whatever. So if you do select an F key, preferably choose one that you may never actually click. Um, or else while you're clicking them in the game it'll be switching your scenes and everybody will see the screen switch and it'll look really strange. So what you want to do uh, to solve that is to choose a key combo which would be either control or alt or control and alt I think that might work control and alt yes control and alt and f1 works so if you chose something like control and f1 um, there you go just click ok now every time I click control and f1 it switches to the scene so we want to set one from the main lobby as well which actually this one should be control and f1 uh, and the other one should actually be control F2, I'd say, because this is the multi. And it's just, just to keep it a little bit more organized, because otherwise you would end up confusing yourself between what's main and what isn't. So there we go. That switches with those two keys now. And we'll do the same for the BRB screen, control and F3. Oops. And then this screen will basically We'll right click, select the text, we'll just say this will be BRB text. Uh, you don't have to use an underscore by the way, that's just a habit of programming for myself here. Um, so yeah, uh, you could just type whatever you want and you could type BRB or you could type B right back, whatever floats your boat. It's nice to set a font other than Arial because it's way too overused. We'll use impact, I like impact, uh, you got a whole load of stuff, and plus you can also use any font from your computer. Uh, another thing is, if I press OK now, you'll see, if I make this bigger, it looks really, really blurry, and some people don't really know how to fix that, so uh, it may seem obvious, but if you change the font size to say something like, I don't know, 352, <laughs> completely random number, um, and then we'll scale this down just just to make this quicker if you right click on sources and select position and size you can select uh, fit to screen that's just the quickest way of sorting that out and then we'll scale that down further from there now as you can see it looks really quite sharp because the actual uh, I guess I, I think it would be called the text vector size would be actually higher I'm not really too sure what the terminology is, but the detail is uh, a lot higher because of the actual resolution of the text. Now the text is um, lowered in scale. It fits quite nicely. Or you can either lay that out as center, center horizontally or center vertically. And what that actually means is if you choose center, it will put it in exactly the center of the picture no matter like where it was before. This means that if you want it at the top, you could drag it to the top, and if you select position and center horizontally, it will just line it up with that line, it won't actually shift it anywhere. The same applies to center vertically, which means that it will put it, I believe, right in the middle of the screen on the center line. But because it's, uh, we, we probably want this in the middle of the screen for this tutorial, so. Okay, so. Now we have the BRB in the middle of the screen. Um, you can select uh, some, you, you know, you, so far watching this video, you're probably starting to understand what's going on here. Um, we can have anything you want. We could even load screens as global sources. They don't have to be loaded as global sources because they load virtually instantly. But stuff that you do want to keep running like indefinitely between screens, it is always better to use global sources. I'm a bit of a culprit for not doing that. Uh, but I would definitely recommend you do it. Uh, so we're just we're just gonna load up a mono capture since I haven't actually signed it as a global source anyway. We're just gonna select uh, the same screen, one out of three. Put this one up, move this to the top. Um, and another neat feature I never used: um, you can actually set the opacity. You could make it dark, and that means that now uh, we're switching between main and BRB everything just sort of goes to a sort of sleeps looking style 
and whatever's on the screen uh, is like that. Um, it would be nice if I had something that was a bit better to look at, but there is uh, certain copyright issues about using certain things on my screen, so for the sake of that, uh, you're just going to have to imagine that there's stuff going on over here and all that stuff. Okay, so this would be your game screen. Um, here is the lobby. Uh, I think um, I think we're actually going to load up a lobby. We're going to get a real picture on the screen here. I'm gonna click add uh, capture video. Yes, so here we go. Here's the fun stuff. I've got a separate tutorial of how to load up your Xbox on your screen, um, but to put it simply, um, you want to right click and add. If you're on Windows 10, this is super easy. Uh, you want to click monitor capture. We're gonna call this, um, we'll just call it Xbox. Select monitor three, which is the one that I'm using. Yeah, I I haven't really mentioned this in this tutorial, but I have three monitors, so uh, it's always good to have more than one monitor to do this, or else you're gonna be lost between what's happening. I'll put this on the bottom. Um, and if a pro tip is, if I'm too quick or anything like that, feel free to keep pausing and watching what I'm doing, because uh, I. Uh, I'm clicking stuff, but it's kind of obvious what I'm doing because I've just gone over it before. Um, okay, so here's the Xbox. It's not showing because it's not plugged in. Now it is. Um, turn it on remotely, click stream, and here we go. This is the Xbox app, and the really awesome thing is about the Xbox app is um, you can link directly to your Xbox, and you don't even need a capture card. So here we go. Here's the Xbox, as simple as that. And see it doesn't fit. Simple solution is right click on this right here, Xbox, position and size, center, fit to screen, and it's fixed. Um, because we're in a lobby, you might not want it taken up the whole screen. So let's just add it in. Do what we did with the webcam and just bring it down. Maybe, maybe have me like right here. Uh, I haven't mentioned about the chat room yet either. Uh, right click add. This is different. Now, obviously, uh, you should pay attention to the difference here, particularly because um, this isn't going to be something you'll have. I did mention in another tutorial that you'll need a thing called the CLR browser. And if you've been seeing this and wondering why you don't see it, um, it's because it's a separate plugin, which you can download from the OBS website. I'll put the link in the description below, uh, but you can you can get this from just typing in uh, CLR Browser into Google. It's pretty simple to find. It's, you can download it from the OBS website. So yeah, once you've installed that, you'll have to restart this application, OBS, or else it won't show up. And then it'll be in this box when you right click. No, it's Supermax. Wow. This is what it's like to be alone and feel lonely at once. Got that right. Anyway, um. <laughs> See, back in my day, we didn't have all these fancy gadgets. We just had to walk around the battlefield and crouch when we needed to, and then. It sure is spooky out here. Booyah! Get it? Booyah! Like I'm a scary, scary punk ghost. Punk ghost.